All right, this is grade two, module five, lesson nine. And our point of this lesson is to just continue using our manipulatives so that we can understand the standard algorithm. So the point of these series of lessons is really to nail home the fact that we want our students to really start learning and understanding the standard algorithm. So what this whole series is asking us to do is to solve the problems using the place value chart and the place value disks, kind of like over here on the side, doing over here on scratch work, and show our work in vertical form over here. So let's get started by writing it in vertical form. But really, they want us to have our students be using those place value disks. Now, I'm going to do it with the dots, but your students might be using actual disks with the number 100 or the number 10 or the number 1 on each of those disks. Um, and they can manipulate them like poker chips or something. But I'm going to do it with dots just because I'm doing it on a screencast. So we're going to begin by modeling this 446. So let's do that, and I'll do it in blue. So 400 looks like that. 40 looks like that. And there. And 6 looks like that. So there's our 446. And now we're going to model our 334. So 300. 30, and there's our 4. And the idea is to remember that whenever we have 10 or more in, in any particular column, that means we can group those 10 together and cache them in for a dot in the next column over. And bundle them together for a dot in the next column. So let's see what we can do if we can have any bundling going on here. So let's first look at our ones column. So we have six blue dots and we have four red dots. So six plus four is ten. So we know that all ten of those can be bundled together for a single dot in the tens column. So, and that would leave nothing left over in our ones column because all 10 of these would get bundled together for a single dot in the tens column. Now, what would that look like over here in the vertical uh, form? Well, 6 plus 4 is 10. So all 10 of those can be bundled together for a dot in the tens column, and we would have 0 left over in the ones column. And now back over here we can look and we see that we have four blues, three reds, and a green. So that's four tens, three tens, and one ten. So that's eight tens all together. Well that's not enough to bundle anything, so that's just eight tens. So over here in our vertical form, four tens plus three tens plus one ten equals eight tens. And then over here in our hundreds, we have four hundreds plus three hundreds equals seven hundreds, and that's not enough to bundle anything together. And so we write a seven. Over here in our vertical form, four hundreds plus three hundreds equals seven hundreds. So the answer is seven hundred and eighty, and we have the same answer in both cases. Over here in our place value chart, and over here in our vertical form. So this is more of the same, so I'm going to go kind of quickly here. We're going to start by writing in vertical form 358 plus 443. You know, this time what I think I'll do is I will add vertically and then we'll verify it with our place value chart. The directions don't say that, but at some point we're going to have to start doing that. So let's start by looking at our ones. So we have eight ones, plus we have three more ones, so that's eleven ones altogether. 
So that means we can cash in 10 of those for an extra dot in the tens column, and we would have one left over in the ones column. And now adding our tens column, we have five tens plus four tens plus one ten. So that's ten tens. That means we can bundle those ten together for a dot in the hundreds column, and we would have zero left over in our tens column. And then in our hundreds column, we would have three hundreds plus four hundreds plus one hundred. That's eight hundreds in our hundreds column. So our answer using the vertical method is 801. Let's take a moment. And let's verify that. Let's make sure we did it right. All right, so here's our hundreds column, our tens column, and our ones column. And remember, I would probably, as a teacher, I would be using uh, place value disks like poker chips that have been labeled with hundreds, tens, or ones. Um, oh, but I'm going to do it with the dot method just because I'm doing a, a podcast. So let's first begin by modeling 358. So that's going to look like 358. There's our 358. And now we're going to model 443. And now it is time for us to add things together. So we're going to begin by looking at our, hun our ones place right here. So we have eight ones plus three ones. So that makes 11 ones. Well, we can take 10 of those. There's our 10. And bundle it together for an extra dot in the tens column. You'll notice that's what this little one right here is, is this green dot right here. And then we have one little dot left over. So that goes one right here. Now we can count our tens. We have five tens plus four tens plus one ten. So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have ten tens. So all ten of those can be bundled together to equal a dot in the hundreds column, meaning we have zero left over in the tens column because every single t ten got bundled together. And sure enough, there's our one here and our zero here, just like here's our one dot and our zero. Now counting up the hundreds, we have three hundreds plus four hundreds plus one hundred. That's eight hundreds. And that's our answer. You can see that our answers match. I'm going to go a little quick on this one. I'm just going to model the standard algorithm, except I'll use it using the, the vocabulary or the language of the place value chart and the place value disks. So we've got three ones plus seven ones. That equals ten ones. So that means we can bundle a ten and have nothing left over. There's our 10. And then we have 5 tens plus 5 tens plus 1 ten. That's 11 tens. So we can bundle 10 of those together for 100. Plus we have 1 ten left over. So there's our 11. You can kind of see 5 plus 5 plus 1 is 11. And so there's our 1 and there's our 1. 11. And then we have 7 hundreds plus 100 plus 100. That's 9 hundreds done. We don't get to rebundle or bundle anything. So our answer is 910. And this last problem, I include it not because it's uh, crazy super different from anything we've already experienced. It just says that this time it allows for students who want to, to continue using their mental math or they can use some sort of simplifying strategy or they can use the standard algorithm. The idea is, with this series of problems, let students choose the method that is most comfortable for them 
even if they want to change methods per problem. For example, I could see some students thinking of 200 plus 400 is 600. 70 plus 30 is another 100. 5 plus 5 is 10. So the answer is 710. That's one way to do it. Another student might want to do the standard algorithm, in which case they would add and get 710. Or another student may want to use the arrow method and say, well, we're going to start with 275. We're going to add by 400. That gives us 675. Then we'll add by 30. That gives me 705. Then I'll add by 5, and that gives me 710. And collectively, there's my 435 that I'm adding by. So there's a variety of methods, and I just thought I would sh include this slide to show that the students at this point may still have a preference for one method over the other, and that's okay at this stage of the game. And that wraps up Grade 2, Module 5, Lesson 9, where we're still using manipulatives, but now it's with a focus on that standard algorithm.